Got a puppuccino. <laughs> Not for me. What's a puppuccino? What are you talking about? I've become at that age where I take my dog with me sometimes to drive. Oh, okay. I get so excited. Yeah. So I go through Starbucks to get Holly's coffee and they go, would you like a puppuccino? I'm like, I'm not thirsty. They have thir- a I'm coffee not for dogs. He's like, it's for your dog. How much is it? It's free. Why do the dogs drink free? We need to stand up for human rights. I want a, I want the same rights dogs get. I want a people chino. <laughs> what did we'll they put right in We'll be right back. We gotta find out what they put in it. Good morning, welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. up. What do they put in it? Uh, like cats? Good. <laughs> too, too far? Is it cat lovers no, no, are going to no, comment yeah. now? Too far. I'm sorry. <laughs> Real bad. I was just joking. Well, you I do, love cats. You do notice there's no cats ever around a Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just whipped cream. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm, I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. We, we got, got a great day. Yeah, yeah. it's Comet Quinn's day. Comet Quinn's, and we, are getting, we were talking about this today. When we first started it, Oh, you were like, hey, we should do comments, and we go... This is like a year ago. And you go, we don't have any. And then we're like, well, we can make them up until people start doing them. <laughs> we should read comments on, like, on the air, and everyone was like, there are no comments. <laughs> well, technically, we... there are no views. <laughs> <laughs> now we have too many comments, yeah. but we love Pages all of them. them. Oh, we love them. We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 8 and verse uh, something. Go, oh, 19. 19, yeah, yeah get yeah. your Bible going. Yeah. Uh, Heather Leigh Hengelman said, I'm all about that praise. No devil. Um, uh, and we, we didn't think about that on the fly. I'm all, all about, about that the grace. grace. The grace. No devil. Oh, no devil. Because yeah. we were trying to figure out what to yeah. go with I it. I liked your snap. That was all nice. Right. Russell really says, I wish there was a wake up Saturday. I love that. I do too. You want yeah. more days. Yeah. Thank you, Russell. No. He wants more. No Saturday? <laughs> no. It starts this week. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Shout out from... Puyallup, Washington. Pu- Puyallup. From Foursquare Church. This is Bruce, Bruce Ketling. Yeah. What's up, Bruce? What's up, Bruce? From Washington. I like R- Richard Wett was talking about Taxi. I love the show Taxi. Oh, I know. That's so funny. No, R- Richard, he, he hit us right at home. Right. What a great show. And then, Lauren, will you please let my wife know on Facebook or some social media, Scott's cough is so funny. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just take a picture of that on your I phone and text it to her. I the other day, and her and my daughter are like, oh my gosh, Dad. You Please. coughed on the show, and it scared me. <laughs> that made me cough. <laughs> my cough is funny. Uh, Monica uh, Godek, good good wake up. I believe you touched many people today. Felt an extra anointing that morning. Even though I'm out of state now, I love my pastors at LWBC. We love I you. I love that. Maggie you. says, tomorrow is my birthday. Oh, happy, happy birthday. birthday. And also... Coming up on six months clean. I've been showering since the seventh grade, so I don't even know how many years that is for me to be clean. Uh, yeah, I was... I, I was I've was. i been clean. I haven't been clean that long. <laughs> no. I skipped a couple days just last week. Oh, congratulations. We are very proud of you. Keep it up. No, it is. God's got some big stuff for you. It does. And it wants to do some great things in your life. Chris Banny, from seed to sequoia, from dirt, greatness is born. South Africa is waiting for you guys. Would love to listen to your sermons live. Listen, Chris... We're what? going to Uganda. Now, it's a little bit north. It is might that, be a bit of a drive. Is that south? I don't know where it is. No, Jason, we're just, mid. Jason puts me on a plane. <laughs> 38 hours later, I wake up somewhere in Africa. Drive north. We'll be in Kampala on November 6th, 7th, and 8th at Fenero Ministries doing a family conference. That's so going to be, be cool. fun for you. He tricked me. And then we go up to Gulu. Maybe I'm come going up with again. Us. We're going to uh, plant a church in Gulu. Boo. And uh, Megan Pitt says, Scott, you're still juicing. I'm quite impressed. I am. I'm juicing, and I've been working out. This is it right here. Look, he's juice. got green juice in there and instead of coffee. Right. And so do I. <laughs> <laughs> the way you did it, you stare at it. <laughs> green juice in there. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. <laughs> All right. What I looked got? up the Dutch quote. Girl blogger wrote this. I looked up the She's Dutch quote. Fun. He was quoting Austin Powers. Ha ha. I'm glad I found this channel. Thanks for making the Daily Bible Study fun. <laughs> But she would have had to seek for that. Yeah. Because even my wife and son were like, w- why do you keep mentioning the Dutch in every show? And I'm like, you have to go back a bunch of shows because there was a show where Scott brought up the Dutch. There's a, it's called a Belgian dip. Remember he's got the, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He's got That's a why when you said it. Thing, and he's all, he's all, they're like, hey, you got a little. He's all, I know, I know. It's called a Belgian dip. <laughs> His chair's all. He's like, I need an old priest and a young priest. <laughs> We're not My chair promoting. seems to be demon possessed. You do not need to watch that show. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. 
Check this out. You were teaching this weekend. Um, it was such a great message you had. Um, your iPhone, and you made all these uh, kind of references back to how our phone and our lives can can yeah you well, you be pick similar. Up, you pick up every day. Either you have an eye piece or you have an eye stress. Yeah. You choose what you carry with you. It was so good. And so and I, you, you I, said investigate. Yes. Um, I wrote them down: information, integrity, and imagination. Yes. And uh, one, the part that I want to talk about today is the investigate. You said that when you have stress or anxiousness and worry in your life, it might be a good time to investigate. Isn't that, what, what is it that's causing you stress? We talked about just your phone doesn't work, and right away you're like, okay, i got to figure this out. Stop everything, yeah, and, and i got to figure it out because it's slowing down parts of my life. But when people get some stress yeah. and worry going on and some fear, yeah. oftentimes they just kind of take it. Yeah. And they don't look and go, okay, wait a second, why is that? And it when doesn't the, mean that the, you're not going to have stressful circumstances, right? You have those. So find out, okay, can I eliminate stressful circumstances? Yeah. Or do I need to change me and be able to just take it in the midst of a stressful circumstance? I, I do with a, I, a lot of cars in my life. You know, I, I, yes. I, I, I love it. I love it. And so I'll buy a car and then I'll fix it up. I'll drive it. I'll enjoy it. And then I'll sell it. And yeah. it's amazing. And God always just really blesses that. So, uh, but when that check engine light comes on, you got to I've investigate. Learned, I've, I've learned. You just drive down to like AutoZone or Checker Auto or someplace, and they'll plug it in for free and yeah. tell you what's going on. Right. You have to investigate what that problem is. Like you want to find out right away. You but, don't want to just keep driving on it. But a lot of times, we have a check engine light at our job, or we right. have a check engine light in our marriage, or we have yeah. a check engine light with our teens. Yeah. And we're not as maybe uh, quick to investigate those things. We let them kind of continue. We keep driving the car with the check engine light until, on. Until, until one suddenly day is, smoke's coming out the radiator and we're calling the, the, the church and we're calling our buddies and we're like, I don't know what to, we're calling our dads or our moms or our, we're calling somebody saying, help, because, you know, my wife's they, leaving me or my, my, my husband's leaving me. They ignore all the signs that we need to have ahead of time. It makes me think of, um, it's your story. Remember when you were coming home from skiing and your buddy Dave's Jeep? <laughs> Right? Yes. yes. And the engine light, the, the, engine thing went all the way to super hot. And he's like, man, something's wrong with the well, gauge. Well, the oil pressure light went to zero. And he, and he, but he didn't tell anybody in the car. We found out this after the fact. Yeah. He, and, but he thought to himself, hmm, that's an old car. The oil pressure gauge probably broke. <laughs> <laughs> then he noticed the, the temperature gauge kept creeping up on him until it was maxed out. And he thought, well, that's weird. It must be an electrical issue. <laughs> <laughs> Barreling down the road, coming home from... From show, we were, we were coming into Globe, and the, and the engine just went, boop, nope, <laughs> and smoke. <laughs> but isn't that what sometimes people's life does? Is It's all the signals are there, all the signs are there, and, they're yeah. like, and all of a sudden it goes, boop, and it's all of a sudden it's a massive problem that you didn't have to have when, had you just investigated and found out, oh, okay, let's pull over. This is not going to be that big of a deal. We need to blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, and that's how it is in life. And the word you gave just really brought such a reminder, I think, to all of us to, to take a look at the place in our, places in our lives where our check engine light might be on. Right. And to take the time to investigate. I love that. You reminded all of us to go, okay, I do need to look at yeah, this. You things. come home and you're stressed out because everything, the kids are all over, nobody listens. And, and what do you want? You want to escape. You want to escape. So you don't come home as much as you should. Or you go right into a show. show like yeah. a, you, you, you go into your room and you close the door and everything. Calgon, take me away. <laughs> oh, nobody. Who remembers that? <laughs> Why? Calgon was wait the original bath bomb. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> Why is he having another cup of coffee? He at never home? has a second cup of coffee at home. <laughs> you did that so perfectly. <laughs> what was it? Folgers good to Folgers the last good drop. To the last the... drop. Oh, anyways, so um, rather than getting in there and um, going, you know what? I just need, and that was kind of number two was get information because usually you find out that information is all that you needed to be able to get rid of those stressful circumstances. You yeah. get information on how to raise your kid and get your household where they begin to listen to you the first time and they begin to obey and you have kids that have a happy heart and kids that obey are happier. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, just a little tweak of information and my house now is more peaceful. My yeah. car, driving with my family is more peaceful. And your marriage is all yeah. crazy. You get a little information, you're like, oh, I need to take her out on a date. I and you can't get that information kind of from another episode of Bull. Like you use Bull. A lot of people, do you know what show that is? That's yeah, Jason show. Bull is like this investigator, yeah, kind of so psychologist, good. and he works at this with legal stuff. It's a pretty cool show. Yeah. But that show is not going to give you, it's going to give you a nice escape mm -hmm. from your mind for a second, but it's not going to give you the information you need right. to get your situation settled. 
right. into peace. So Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 19. We ran out of time. We didn't get to the <laughs> We didn't get to our scripture. But let's read it. When someone tells you to consult medium spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Wow. Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Now, maybe you're not going to voodoo to try and get your answer. No. But a lot of times people go to the lost. We go to the world right. to try and figure out our answers. What does the world say? And we listen to those strategies and philosophies that are broken. It's better. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You just inquire of God. God, what do I need to do? What's going on in my marriage? Lord, what do I need to do with my teenager? Lord, what's going on in my job? Why am I feeling unrest right now? I'm, I'm having a war within me. God, reveal to me what's going on and give me the wisdom and answer. You know, the Bible says that anyone who asks for wisdom will receive it. God gives yes. it without gives finding it. fault. It's free to us. And so whatever's going on in your life, ask the Holy you Spirit. Had, you had a really good point. Um, I bring that out on the break. You were, you were talking um, about the two babies fighting. Yeah. Rebecca had, uh, the Bible talks about uh, in the book of Genesis that Rebecca had this war going on. She was pregnant, and the two kids were just attacking with each other, the two brothers. <laughs> and they would be Jacob and Esau. But the Bible says that she was looking, she was like, what's going on within me? And she inquired of the Lord, right. Lord, what is happening to me right now? And uh, then the Lord began to explain that you have two nations within, but so also with us that we can, we can have these wars happening emotionally inside of us. We can have this war happening, and we can say, okay, Lord, what's, what's going, going on, on in me? Can you help me sort this out? Give me the word that I need to solve this problem. I think a lot of people have been living so long with stress and worry that they don't realize that their temperature gauge is running all the way hot. And that's really, as soon as I began to feel any amount of stress, I'm like, okay, now what's going on? Yeah. Hey, God, what's going on? Yeah. I, don't, I don't like this feeling. I like to live in a constant state of peace and, and, and joy and, and stress-free in my life. And it doesn't mean that I don't have problems because, you know, I have good-sized problems that happen all sure. the time in my life. You were even talking, some, I was listening to your sermon, I'm like, oh, yeah, you're talking about different things going on in people's life. I'm like, yeah, I've had that, yet I live in a, a state of peace. You can have that also. As soon as you begin to feel stress, and maybe you've been living with stress, you got to go, all right, God, <sighs> Let's investigate. Let's look at this. Then you begin to look at areas in which you can remove stress. And then you begin to look at areas where you're like, well, there's nothing I can do about that. So I have to change me. So if I can't change the stressful circumstance, then I have to look inside of myself like David did and said, hey, God, show me the anxiety in my heart. Search me, Lord, and get rid of the, the, the wrong thinking, the wrong ways that I, 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 I go to work with and I show up at my job and I'm stressed out at my job about my boss. But maybe if I switch some thinking about myself, I use the traffic one this week too. People are all stressed out in traffic because traffic is a big surprise. Right. You know what's going to happen tomorrow? There's going to be traffic again. You know what's going to happen on Friday? Well, just like Monday, it'll be the same. You'll have traffic. Yeah. Can you just pray traffic away? That would be amazing. <laughs> Everybody... <laughs> Everybody's like, you know what? I'm not going to work today. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> Poof. Well, that's called the rapture. And you missed it. <laughs> so you might want to rethink that prayer. What was that? What was the movie with uh, where he was... Uh, we got to just work four minutes over. No, I got to do the movie. We though. have to stop. No, we'll be in the movie on Friday. Let's pray over there. Where he's like this and all the traffic went. It was, it was, was uh, Bruce Almighty. Bruce Almighty. Yeah. How many fingers am I holding? He's all... Six. <laughs> he had six fingers. Let's pray over the day. David, Father, Lord, we ask that you bless their day. Guide them, direct them, Lord. Help us to investigate. Help us to get in there. And when our gauges are going off and we begin to feel those that stress and that worry and anxiety that we, that we go to you, Lord, and you show us what we need to do. Do I need to remove certain things that are causing me stressful, fix some things? Do I need to get some new information so that I can deal with some problems and make situations less stressful? Or maybe there's stuff in me that I need to change and so that I can walk with peace and I can just hand over to you all my stress and worry and anxiety, knowing that you, God, are the one that is leading and guiding my lives into all truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed today. Share it. Share it. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Boom. Yeah, don't forget about the men's conference we have coming up uh, That's tomorrow gonna, night. Tomorrow night. Don't Ash case treats in town. We got bacon. It's going to blow it up. We got axe throwing. We got knives. We've got great word. We get together. We sing a little we're bit. We pray. We worship out. God. We hear the word of God. And, we got, uh, and we're And dudes. we got some funny things going on. You and I, this, it's going to be funny. Yeah. Anyway, we will, miss see, we will see you tomorrow night. Be blessed. And make, get your husband and boyfriend to go and your older teenagers.
Yeah. It's not an option. Go. Yep. I'm sorry. I am keep going. And so I want to show you how you can experience a long, amazing life that is stress-free because you are not designed to carry stress. Just like your iPhone isn't designed to have a virus on it, you're not designed to carry stress and work. It makes you not work right. It makes you not function right. It makes you make bad decisions. And the one thing that you need to be creative is the one thing that stress begins to shut down. The one part of your brain that you need to be able to get out of that storm faster is the one thing that the enemy has convinced you to shut down. So we as a church, we are, I'm telling you, when we get done with this series, we are all going to walk around. We're going to be so peaceful and so laid back. They're going to think that we put stuff in the communion. Amen? 